this is the present accepted form of the structure of the atom in which the electrons revolve around the nucleus of the atom in fixed orbits or shells so are these electrons distributed randomly that is can there be any number of electrons in any shell well no there's a definite pattern a definite distribution of electrons around the nucleus which is known as the electronic configuration of the atom it's a definite arrangement of electrons around the nucleus of the atom these to get the electronic configuration it follows a certain set of rules these rules were given by two scientists bohr and berry the two scientists they gave a set of rules and these are known as bohr and berry scheme so let's see what this scheme says the first rule of the scheme is the maximum number of electrons in a particular shell is given by 2 n square and this n stands for the number of shell that is the first shell it has n is equal to 1 so if we substitute this in the formula we get 2 into 1 square which is 2 the second shell has n is equal to 2 so if we substitute it in the formula we get 8 18 32 and so on so this means that the first shell can have maximum 2 electrons the second shell can have maximum 8 electrons the third shell can have maximum 18 electrons and so on so this is a helium nucleus it has two protons and two neutrons now let's add electrons to this so as we add electrons observe what happens so you see that the third electron that i added automatically moves to the second shell even if i try to add it in the first shell we see that it occupies or it takes position in the second shell and not in the first shell this is because by 2n square rule we know that the first shell can accommodate a maximum of two electrons so the third electron cannot be accommodated in the first shell and so it takes position in the second shell similarly if i add one more electron it takes its position in the second shell and not in the first shell so if you remember the names that are given to the shells so the first shell is known as the k shell it can have a maximum of two electrons the second shell known as the l shell can have a maximum of eight electrons m shell can have 18 n 32 and so on let's move to the second rule the second rule says that electrons are not accommodated in a given shell unless the inner shells are filled that is the electrons are filled in a step wise manner let's see here we have a nucleus so as we add electrons the electrons first occupy the first shell that is the k shell according to bohr the energy of the shells is related to their size so the first shell is smallest in size so it has the lowest energy now when this shell gets filled then the electrons are occupied in the second shell so this shell that is the l shell has energy more than the first shell so when this shell gets filled then the electrons go to the next shell that is the m shell which has the highest energy out of these three shells as the size of the shells increase the energy of the shells also increase so we see that the electrons are occupied in the shells in a step wise manner that is first the k shell gets filled then l m n and so on the third rule says that the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated in the outermost orbit is 8 so the outermost orbit cannot have more than 8 electrons so let's revise the three rules so according to the first rule the electrons are occupied in the shells following the rule 2n square that is the first shell can have a maximum of 2 electrons second shell can have maximum 8 electrons and so on the second rule says that the shells are filled in step wise manner that is the electrons first occupy the k shell then l shell and so on the third rule says that the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated in the outermost shell is 
So the outermost shell cannot have more than 8 electrons. So let's see. Let's try to write the electronic configurations of a few atoms. So here we have oxygen. It has 8 electrons. So let's revise the rules. So according to the first rule, the electrons are occupied following the rule 2n square. So the first shell of oxygen, it can accommodate 2 electrons. Now oxygen has 8 electrons. So the first shell occupies 2 electrons. The remaining 6 electrons go to the next shell. So this is for the K shell. This is for the L shell. Now since it has only 8 electrons, so we leave the other factors. The second rule says that shells are filled in stepwise manner. So the way we write the electronic configuration is, we first write the number of electrons that are occupied in the first shell. Then we write a comma. Then we write the number of electrons present in the next shell. Since it has only two shells, that is the eight electrons can be accommodated in the two shells itself. So we enclose it within brackets. This is how we write the electronic configuration. And the third rule says that the maximum number of electrons in the outermost shell cannot be more than eight. So since we have only six electrons in the outermost shell, so it also obeys the third rule. So this is the electronic configuration of oxygen atom. So for oxygen, the electronic configuration is 2, 6. That is the first shell or the K shell has 2 electrons and the second shell or the L shell has 6 electrons. Similarly, if we have an atom, neon atom, it has 10 electrons. So the first shell can have 2 electrons and the remaining 8 electrons are present in the second shell, that is the L shell. Now let's take another example, sodium. It has 11 electrons. So from the first rule, we know that the first shell can have 2 electrons. Now sodium has 11 electrons. So the second shell can have 8 electrons. Remaining 1 electron, it goes to the third shell. So from rule 2, we know that the electrons, or they occupy shells in a stepwise manner. So how do we write it? We write the electrons in the first shell, followed by the second shell and the third shell. And then we enclose it within brackets. And we see again in this case, the number of electrons in the outermost shell is not more than 8. So it also obeys the third rule. So the electronic configuration of sodium is 2, 8, 1 and it's not 2, 9. So we have to follow the 2n square rule in this. Similarly, another atom, argon atom, this has 18 electrons. So it also obeys the uh, 2n square rule. So the first shell has 2 electrons. This is the K shell. L shell has 8 electrons. M shell has 8 electrons. So the electronic configuration for argon is 2, 8, 8. Let's take another example. Calcium atom. It has 20 electrons. Let's see how it follows the rules. Okay. So according to the first rule, it should occupy the electrons based on the 2n square rule. So we have calcium. It has 20 electrons. So the first shell can accommodate 2 electrons. The second shell can accommodate 8 electrons. And the third shell can accommodate 18 electrons. We are left with 10 electrons. This means that the third shell can accommodate 10 electrons. Now, the second rule says that the shells are filled in stepwise manner. So, if we have to fill them, we get 2, 8 and 10. But, now when we see the third rule, it says that the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated in the outermost shell is 8. If you see here, there are 10 electrons in the outermost shell. So this is wrong. There cannot be more than 8 electrons in the outermost shell. The outermost shell can have only maximum number of 8 electrons. So how do we write the electronic configuration of calcium? We write 2, 8. Since this shell can have maximum 8 electrons, so we write 8. Remaining two electrons go to the last shell. 
this is the electronic configuration of calcium. Remember, we do not write two eight two eight. Why? Because this is wrong. When we are distributing these ten electrons. We do not give the third shell two electrons and the last shell eight electrons. The shells are filled in a stepwise manner. So when we are filling electrons, we first have to give eight electrons to the third shell. The remaining number of electrons they go to the last shell. So in this case, it has ten electrons. So the third shell gets eight electrons. Remaining two electrons go to the last shell. So this is the electronic configuration of calcium. Obeys the third rule, second rule, and the first rule. That is why this arrangement, that is two eight ten, is wrong because it violates the third rule. So the electronic configuration of calcium is two eight eight two. That is, the K shell has two electrons, L eight, M shell eight, N shell two. So we never write two eight ten because any time you see the valence the outermost shell having more than 8 electrons this is wrong so always keep in mind that the outermost shell cannot have more than 8 electrons the magnesium atom consists of 12 electrons what is the electronic configuration of magnesium so again let's recall the rules so magnesium has 12 electrons by the 2n square rule the first shell can have 2 electrons the second shell can have 8 electrons remaining 2 electrons go to the last shell the second rule says that the shells are filled in a stepwise manner so we first fill the k shell then the l shell then the m shell which has 2 electrons so this is the electronic configuration and this does not violate the third rule which says that the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated in the outermost shell is 8 we see that the outermost shell has two electrons so it obeys all the rules so this is the bohr and berry scheme for arranging the electrons in the shells